Hello, welcome back to Storytime at Nana's House. So very, very good to have you here again. So the book I'm going to share right now is Jack and the Beanstalk. But before you say, oh, that story's boring, please give Nana a chance to add a little life to it. Hopefully you'll enjoy it. Plus, it was published by my friends over at Paragon who have given me permission to share it with you. So I'm excited to do so. Before I do, though, I just want to say, if you haven't already done so, please hit that subscribe button below. It's completely free. That way you're notified whenever you know the book, share a song, or some other fun activity. But most importantly, it would be an honor for me to have you as part of my Storytime family and along on this incredible journey together. So please, subscribe today. All right, here we go. Jack and the Beanstalk. Mm -hmm. What? There was a boy named Jack who lived with his mother. They were very poor and had to sell their cow to get money for food. As he was taking the cow to market, Jack met an old man. You won't get much money for such an old cow, he told Jack. But I can give you something better than money for her. Magic beans. He held out his hand and showed Jack five speckled beans. One, two, three, four, five. Magic beans, thought Jack. They sound exciting. He gave the old man the cow and took the beans, thanking him most politely. Then he went home to his mother. Oh, here comes the drama. <clears throat> Jack's mother was extremely cross. Silly boy, she shouted. Thanks to you, we have no cow and no money. She threw the beans out of the window and set Jack straight to bed. Bum, 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 bum. The next morning, Jack was astonished when he looked out of the window. A giant beanstalk had sprung up while he was sleeping. And it stretched all the way up to the sky. Jack ran outside and began to climb the beanstalk. Up and up he went higher and higher till he reached the tippy top. There he found a road which led to a big house. Jack's tummy was rumbling with hunger, so he knocked on the large wooden door. A giant woman answered. She looked kind, and Jack asked if she would give him some breakfast. It will be, it'll be breakfast, I should say, if my husband finds you, she told Jack. He's much bigger than me, and he doesn't like children. But Jack begged and pleaded, and at last the woman let him in. She gave him some bread and milk and hid him inside a cupboard. Soon, Jack heard loud footsteps and felt the cupboard shake. The giant was coming. Jack could hear him roar. Fee, fa, tell, fum, I smell the blood of an Englishman. Don't be silly, the giant's wife said. You smell the sausages I've cooked for your breakfast. Now sit down and eat. After wolfing down three plates of sausages, the giant asked his wife to bring him his gold. She brought two big sacks full with gold coins, which the giant began to count. But he was so sleepy after his big breakfast and soon began to snore. <coughs> Jack crept out of the cupboard and grabbed one of the sacks. Then he rushed out of the house along the road and straight 
down the beanstalk. Hurry, hurry, Jack. Hurry, hurry, Jack. Hurry, hurry, Jack. Run away so quick. <laughs> Jack's mother was overjoyed to see him. And she was even happier when she saw the gold. They lived well while the money lasted. But after a year, it had all been spent. Once again, Jack and his mother had nothing to eat. Don't worry, mother, said Jack. I'll go back up the beanstalk to the giant's house. And so he did. Just as before, Jack knocked on the door and begged the giant's wife for something to eat. Please hold on Anna's page. Is expecting some technical difficulties or operator error. Go away, she told him. The last time you were here, a sack of gold disappeared. My husband was really cross. That means angry. But once again, Jack begged and pleaded, and at last she let him in. She gave him some bread and milk and hid him in the cupboard. Soon, the giant stomped in, bellowing. Fee, foy, foe, fum, I smell the blood of an Englishman. Nonsense, said the giant's wife. You smell the yummy soup I've made for your lunch. Peeping through a crack in the cupboard door, Jack saw the giant slurp down a big barrel full of soup and heard him tell his wife, Bring me my hen, he said. She put a fat red hen on the table, and the giant shouted, Lay! To Jack's astonishment, the hen laid a golden egg. Jack waited until the giant was asleep. <sighs> then he jumped out and snatched the hen. Fast as lightning, he dashed out of the house, along the road, and down, down, down the beanstalk he went. Jack and his mother lived very well on the money they made from the hen's golden eggs, but Jack wanted to climb the beanstalk one last time. He knew the giant's wife would not let him in again, so when she wasn't looking, he sneaked into the house and crawled into the cupboard. Before long, the giant came crashing in. Fee, fi, fo, fum, I smell the blood of an Englishman, he thundered. You smell the steaks I've cooked for your dinner, his wife said. And she put a platter of thick, juicy steaks in front of him. After gobbling up the sticks, the giant took out a golden harp and said, Sing! The harp played a gentle lullaby, and soon he fell fast asleep. Jack sprang out, took the harp, and began to run. But the harp cried, Master! Master! And the giant woke up. With a roar, he leapt and ran after Jack. Oh no, what's going to happen? Oh my goodness. Oh, let's find out quickly, shall we? This is so, oh goodness, suspenseful. Holding the harp tightly, Jack ran for his life. As he scrambled down the beanstalk, he yelled, Mother, Mother, bring the axe. Jack took the axe and started to chop down the beanstalk. The giant quickly climbed back up to the top before it snapped in two. And that was the last time Jack saw him. With the hen and the harp, Jack and his mother were able to live happily ever after. And they were never hungry again. And that's the end. Da, 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 da. Oh my goodness. Wow, wasn't that something? Oh, now this story has been around a long, long time. There's been a couple of different versions of it. Now, 
Nana does not think you should ever take anything, no matter how hungry you are. So Jack did not exactly make the right decisions, first by taking a bag of gold, or secondly, taking the hen, and late, taking the golden eggs from the hen, or last, taking the magic heart. But I know it's just a story, so it's just imaginary. But please, don't ever take something just because. I don't know. It's just not the right thing to do. But Jack was a silly boy, and I know he was trying to just feed himself and his mother. But maybe there were other ways. And I bet you could think of a lot more ways for Jack to make money himself instead of having to take someone else's. But it was a great fairy tale. Nonetheless, I hope that you enjoyed it. It's time for me to go, but before I do, I just want to encourage you to continue letting your light shine by being kind. Until next time, take care of yourselves. God bless you. And remember, this Nana right here loves you. Take care.